Why do my ears fail me? <laughs> this question comes from John in Toronto, Canada. And John writes, Hi Paul, some days I'll put on a piece of music and think, this doesn't sound very good. Is my hearing so acute that day that I can hear the music's flaws? Or am I just not in the mood for that piece of music? Probably the latter, because on another day, it'll sound great on the same system. Could it be that some days I should be reading a book or gardening and not listening to music? <laughs> well, John, I think you kind of—I think you kind of guessed it. Um, but but th there is a few things we could illuminate upon. Some days I go into the system, and it always sounds, you know, as it should, revealing open, spacious, all of that. But you know, some days I'm just not all that interested in it, and other days I, I am. And I think that has a lot to do with mood. Because as I have said many times, our ability to hear is a function of two things. Our tympanic membranes, our ears, and our brains. So we don't hear with our ears. We, we, we take in sounds, but without our brain's able, uh, ability to make sense of all of it, not, this is just a series of frequencies that have no meaning whatsoever. And so it's our brain that, that organizes, changes, and, and brings up references like, ah, I know, that's Paul's voice. Ah, that's a trumpet, clarinet, whatever it might be. And it we can form mental images of it, but it's the brain that does all that work, which is why, to uh, deviate just a little bit, I tell people all the time, don't worry about your hearing. Well, do worry about it in that you need to protect it, but don't worry about your hearing if you want to be an audiophile, because some of the best listeners I know have cutoffs uh, for, for their hearing at about 2K. Uh, as, they, as they've aged and all that. Our brains slowly make up for it so that even if you're, you're reduced from say 20K hearing down to 2K hearing or 1K hearing and you hear a trumpet play, you still know it's a trumpet. If you hear me speaking, you still know it's me. And that all has to do with the adaptation of our senses. So th there's a, a very strong correlation there. And of course, our senses are controlled to some degree by our mood. It's also my observation, nothing scientific at all, that on different barometric pressure days, different days of humidity, the changes in the weather tend to affect the way that I hear things. Now, one could say, oh, well, that kind of makes sense. I mean, the air is less dense or it's more moist, you know, whatever. I have no idea if that actually affects the frequency ranges that I'm, I'm thinking that it does. I don't know. But I can tell you that I have made that observation more than a few times. And it, it just could be that there's something to that as well. And you're in Toronto. Well, Toronto, that could be fairly humid climate at times. I've frozen my ass off in Toronto a couple of times. Anyway, I don't think your ears are failing you. And I think that's what's going on. Okay. <laughs> Gotta have a laugh once in a while, right? Thanks for the question. <laughs> I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye.